So I set a camera up there as well. Kind of shining out that way because I think they're going to work this point a lot because the farmer left a lot of hay down in here. And uh, they're going to work up in this hay trying to get insects and such. I, uh, I've noticed that when hay's left down and the cows were just moved out of this field, they're not going to be back for at least a month. So uh, I don't have to worry about cows getting into my pictures and such. But I've noticed that this is the second kind of thing they migrate to. They like that fresh green clover. And I don't know if you can see down. I've set two cameras down there. But I don't know if you can see how green that, the grass is down in there. Uh, the lip of the the field you can't see where the other cameras at but they're both right there and they're both just beautiful green grass every year it comes up real pretty right there and the turkeys work the heck out of it I'm coming in to sit. 
set a trail camera right here where these birds are at. I know it's a strut zone. Wanted to put a camera here for years. There's a third gobbler. Big gobblers. They're not even hardly scared. Like I could have took the head off. I mean, all that's 25 yards. I could have took the head off any one of them. I'd stalked up on them. Come turkey season, if you do that, to be gone like a daggone ostrich running through the woods. <laughs> but, uh, at least I know I'm at the right spot. To uh, put a camera up, I think I'm going to bring a, I'm going to set this thing up and I'm going to bring a decoy up here. It's be a good place for a decoy too. If it's getting this kind of activity. I uh, just went down and beefed up my turkey blind, put a bunch more dead wood around it. There's a hen down there, brushed it in real good. And uh, set a couple cameras to where I can know what's coming in and around my, uh, there's the head of a tom right there, I could take it and plumb off. crazy. I don't understand these birds. It's like they know when it's hunting season. Like those hens, I'm walking straight to them 40 yards and they're just not a care in the world. Man, that's a lot of hens. Well, they got a care in the world now. And there goes a couple other hens. I don't know if the tom's lit or not. It might have been the toms. I don't think so. These birds are so dang used to. Now, there's toms. They're still on the ground. These birds are so used to dag on uh, the farmer that uh, I don't know, they don't fly very much. Still, one tom flew and there's still at least four right there. I hear others to the right, so there's probably more than four. Alright, this is one of the two cameras I have at this location. This one's set up on a decoy. Uh, as you can see, there's a road up power line that comes off right here. And it's um, a trail that connects to another power line that's just right there. I mean, not 70 yards away that comes off the mountain, all the way from the top of the mountain as well. Uh, so this is a nice little flat area. A trail used to be an old access road to some livestock pens uh, on the property. But... Uh, it's a pretty cool little place. I've already found it to be a good place for getting videos um, in just the seven months that I've been on this property. But I've had these cameras set up for a couple months now, so let's see what we got.
Well, you know, I just noticed as I was taking the camera down, because I'm getting ready to pull them, I don't run cameras through the summer. I let uh, the spiders and the ticks and the chiggers and the snakes and the bees and everything have the woods during the summer months. I'm more into fishing on the coast, but um, just notice there's a fresh deer bed right here, and that's a big deer bed. Uh, there's a giant buck that's been working this area. Um, so I'm hoping maybe he's been around a little bit. I'm sure he's already dropped his antlers, but I might have got him before he dropped. All right, so I'm here at a location that I call Deer Point. A point of the woods comes out, just kind of juts out into the field here, the upper field. And uh, I've got a decoy spread out here. Hopefully I got some interaction with something. I'm yet to get any video of any turkeys out here yet uh, so far. Um, but maybe I did this round. I've had these cameras uh, out soaking for about uh, two months. And uh, here's a scrape, which I plan on monitoring very closely and uh, making a mock scrape uh, this upcoming season. I get a lot of video of deer come across here. That's why I call it Deer Point. I've got video of a beautiful piebald doe that comes through here. Um, even her mother, I believe her mother is a piebald that has white coming up her legs. She's not near as white as the offspring, but according to the landowner, the the one with the white up the legs uh, had a couple fawns. Both of them were very white, and only one of the two fawns survived. So uh, I'm hoping she has some fawns this year. They're starting to, to fawn now, so I'm kind of upset about jumping a few deer off this point when I just came in. Um, but I'm pulling everything today anyway, and going to let them have it for the rest of the summer. All right, here I am at spot number three on this property. This is a place where the lower field comes up and makes a point with an access road that goes up into the a really big deep hollow up in there of hardwoods. All right, I'm at my last camera on this property. This camera is much farther away from the other half dozen I've pulled. Um, you got to walk up this hollow uh, probably half a mile and it's steadily inclining, inclining, inclining. And then at this point, it starts to get steep and switches switch backs all the way up to the top. I know because of the vegetation, everything's greened up so much now you can't see, but that is actually, that bowl up in there is absolutely beautiful. And over the winter, I did get some video of gobblers that were coming through here. That This is where they would cross. Also got some red fox and, of course, coyotes. Honestly, I'm surprised to see that the decoy is still standing. I mean, I do anchor it up real good with, and you can see there I've got stakes in the ground, but... I did get some bear tracks in the snow back here when I set it, and uh, I'm surprised the bear hasn't uh, tore it down. But uh, there's a good chance I've got some red fox on here. Hopefully I got some, some turkey footage. Uh, that's what I set it up for, and uh, so let's see what we got. Well, I, I set this camera at a low angle on the decoy, uh, kind of up the road in the decoy there. And the camera is just filthy. The lens was just covered in mud. So uh, I hope it wasn't like that for very long.
All right, so I've pulled the last camera off of this property, and this is the second of four properties I've pulled off of. I only run cameras on four of my five properties during the spring. The fifth property has become my number one spot for deer hunting, so I try to minimize human activity on it as much as possible. I've killed a, a couple of nice bucks off there in recent years. Um, so I'm halfway there. I still got two properties to pull off of, but beautiful day. Uh, it's third week of May, low humidity, about a 12 mile prior breeze at times, um, you know, temperatures in the mid 70s. So really nice. I'm really enjoying it out here. Um, I'll try to get to one of my other two properties a day if I can. Uh, so on to the next one.